you know, it seems like the uh, the solar farm or so solar power has really taken off in the past uh, few years. Uh, why is that? I mean, is it the best, you know, energy source right now? Uh, great question. Uh, so the cost of generating um, renewable solar electricity has dropped precipitously so that um, as the equipment that is used has come down in price over the last 10 years, some 70 to 80 percent. And so that has afforded solar electricity as being the low, lowest cost of new electricity generation um, among all sources of, of electricity generation. So you see utilities wanting to embrace solar to help diversify their fuel mix and bring in a lower cost generation source to help keep rates steady. Now, this announcement and you know, this project in Lambert Town happened within months of it being announced that Santee Cooper's coal plant on Penny Royal Road is going to close in the next, uh, well, they said uh, eight years, but now I guess it's been pushed back a little bit. Is that a coincidence? Is this taking over what Santee Cooper does now with coal? I mean, is, is that why, is is um, is your company the reason Santee Cooper is closing down? I can't say that because I don't know that. Um, the utilities are constantly evaluating their generation assets looking at you know where investments need to be made and i know utilities across the south as well as around the country are retiring coal plants because the cost to uh, retrofit them uh, far exceeds the returns that can be justified by the revenues that are generated so tva and others are doing the exact same thing i don't know we responded to an RFP that Santee Cooper and Central put out uh, for specifically for solar energy. And so all I really know about is um, their efforts to uh, procure 200 megawatts of solar that were part of that uh, RFP. Now, once the Lambert Town project is complete, it's up and running, how much power is it going to produce and, and I don't mean by numbers because I don't understand you know the, the numbers but like as far as number of households and businesses it can provide power for I sure mean, what is that number sure so so it's a 200 megawatt solar farm and to most people including everyone around my dinner table they don't have any idea what that means so this is going to serve about 40,000 homes um, and small businesses with their electricity needs. And why Lambert Town? I mean, there are other areas that, you know, have, and one area that was suggested is the Andrews uh, Airport because they don't hardly use that anymore. Um, you know, um, why, why was that tract of land so attractive to, uh, to your company? Our development team looks for um, sites that have <clears throat> a number of characteristics. One that, uh, uh, provide interconnection into the grid. And so we have to work with the utilities to make sure that, you know, your tra the transmission system is like the interstate highway system. And their own, they can only have so many on and off ramps um, into the transmission system. And it can carry, it can only carry per line so much electricity. So you have to first locate where you can connect into the grid and there's capacity to do that. Then when you understand that and you know from a, a ge geographical area where the utility is would like to have the power, which is usually in a broad geography, you then look for sites that can interconnect, that are buildable, that have uh, the characteristics. We like to look for sites that um, that are, are, don't have, you know, large residential neighborhoods or uh, affect um, uh, too many um, uh, individual homes. And then we like to design our solar projects to screen them and provide visual barriers to create, to maintain the, um, the natural um, viewscapes that, that exist in, in, the, in the area. So um, when you start looking at those characteristics, interconnection to the grid, where the energy 
is is most needed and the um, buildability of of a site. Um, those are the um, th those are some of the uh, overriding or I shouldn't say overriding some of the top considerations. Then there are other there are other considerations too, um, uh, but they're they're not as significant as those three. Right, let me ask about a couple of the concerns that uh, came up during all the uh, hearings and things. Um, noise. We, we we heard that you know these are going to make a loud buzzing noise. You know, is that true? Is that is that what happens? Uh, I wouldn't say it's a loud buzzing noise. The inverters during daylight hours, when the energy is being generated, have a hum to them. Our experience is, and we have solar farms that actually are located next to or between neighborhoods. Our experience has been you don't really you don't hear them outside of the solar farm. We put up um, natural vegetation buffers, and that hum is you know dies. I, I don't know if you say dies down, but fades away um, uh, fairly quickly. And of course, once the sun goes down, they don't make any noise. So um, our experience has been solar farms are very good neighbors because during the daytime, they're relatively quiet. And at night, they're extremely quiet. Um, they don't create any traffic. They don't create any burdens on services. And they provide tax revenues to the, to the local government. So. Um, there, there are a lot of uh, a lot of benefits with uh, really no liabilities that come with the solar farm. And the other concern, especially for residents nearby where this is going to be, um, is that because trees were cut down and things like that, that there's going to be a lot more flooding on their property than you know they used to see uh, once this is complete. Is that going to happen? We we work very carefully to design our projects consistent with um, local and state governmental standards, federal governmental standards, uh, as well as local practices. And so we want to be sure as the long-term owners, and that's one thing about Silicon Ranch, we're about the only company in our um, industry that um, uh, own, develops and owns our projects for the life of the projects and like to own the land underneath our projects because we feel like that makes us a much more committed member of the community. And I'll, I like to make the analogy when you own a project for the, for the life of it, which is 40 plus years, we do that. Um, uh, we, we, we put the same emphasis in building a responsible project that you do when you're building your home. Um, we're not building a home to flip it and trying to cut corners. We're building a home that we're going to live in and we want to make sure it's sturdy, durable, and, um, and we'll achieve our goals for the next 40 years. How long, once these uh, panels are up and running, how long before they have to be either replaced or removed? So if you think about it, there are satellites in space today that are operating on solar technology that goes back more than 40 years. And so the technology has remained relatively stable. It's the efficiencies that have improved. And so, as we talked about earlier, the size of the panel um, may not have changed, but the amount of energy generated by it has increased uh, significantly. So um, these panels are warranted to produce uh, warranted by the manufacturer to produce for 30, at least 30 years at a level uh, that is at least 80% of their nameplate capacity. So if it's a 500 watt panel, it's, it is guaranteed to generate at least um, uh, eight times five, 400 watts of energy um, in year 30. Uh, so they're they're relatively stable, and um, at the end of life, which is for us usually the contract period, because we've developed the we've developed the uh, solar farm to produce the gener the energy required by the contract, and and so at the end of life, we recycle our solar panels. We send them. We have a. a we were the launch partner for a solar recycling company 
that takes the solar panels, strips them apart, and they are able to um, recycle for reuse over 95% of the component uh, of, of the solar panels. We're very, we're very focused as a company on doing everything to be as environmentally sensitive, be it from recycling at end of life components to um, our regenerative land management practices where we, we use um, sheep and other animals to manage our vegetation that makes the soil over time much richer. And again, at the end of life, if we don't want to, of the solar farm, if we don't want to repower the solar uh, farm with new technology, new solar technology or updated solar technology, I mean, we'll have a, a site that is much more fertile and much more um, robust, environmentally speaking, than the site we purchased um, uh, last year. What do you think is the biggest misconception about your company and about um, solar power in general that through this whole process you've learned? The internet is a double-edged sword and you can get lots of great information on the internet, but there's also a significant amount of misinformation and trying to convince those who subscribe to some of the misinformation that the information is not correct and provide accurate information is a challenge, not just in our industry, but in all industries. And so I, that, that is something that we, we work to help educate because we have been the first large scale solar developer to develop solar farms in most of the Southeast. We, we did the first large scale project in the state of Georgia, state of Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas, Kentucky, and we're doing these in South Carolina. So we, we have a, a history of helping to educate and inform communities, officials, and others uh, because we want only the best for the community and for the project. And so we feel like that happens by being very transparent, being open and honest, and providing all the information. That's how we started this business, and we emphasize that in everything we do. When do you think this will be up and running in, um, in Lambert Town? That's a good question. You know, we, uh, we are working through this DHEC uh, process and have worked very closely with DHEC. Um, we have received all the state and local approvals um, from the Public Service Commission to the county. Um, uh, so we hope that, um, you know, we, we will receive the DHEC approvals and then can move into um, uh, the uh, permitting and, and, and construction phases of the project. And project of this uh, takes about uh, two years to build. So I would say I don't have the exact target date uh, here with me, but I, I'd i say it's in about two, this is 2023. So late 2024, mid 2025, we like to provide information on an ongoing basis. And if, you know, we've had neighborhood um, uh, forums where our development team provides uh, renderings of what the site's going to look like, answers questions, talks about the process. I mean, every, every part of our company is focused on being a good community member. Um, one of the things I, I like about our, our delivery team, our, our project managers, when they first come to a site, they go and knock on the doors of the neighbors and they give them their cards and they tell them, if we do anything inadvertently, if blow dust that makes your house or car, call me, we'll get it clean, we'll remedy it. We want, I tell people, and I mean this very sincerely, I've meant it through my entire career, I want to treat people the way I want to be treated. And that's a very important part of the culture here at Silicon Ranch. So let me ask that, yeah, I mean, jobs, I mean, are there going to be job opportunities as this goes along? Yeah, so during the construction phase, um, we'll, there will be as many as 400-plus um, 
um, construction jobs taking place. And we encourage um, and like to hire uh, through our contractor uh, as many local uh, citizens as possible. We, we're, we're very uh, committed to being, as I said, involved in the community, good, uh, good neighbors, and we want to hire as many local people to help the local economy. We also put a very um, great emphasis on military veterans, and we have a, a number of programs to help um, recruit and support military veterans into our industry. And as a company, we have twice as many military veterans uh, as part of Silicon Ranch as um, as the average company does. So we, as I said, we really do put emphasis on local jobs. Yeah, some of it will depend on when the um, when the approvals are received because we want to start moving forward. But we will do quite a bit of uh, notification and advertising to um, to let the uh, let the local community know that the we're having job fairs.